Hi everyone and a warm welcome to Fun of Flying. You may remember that on the 25th of November this year I posted a video that was part one of three showing you a step-by-step -step guide on how to create a quality graphics image of an S-Tech autopilot panel that could then be imported into Touch Portal for subsequent use on your iPad. I didn't go through the actual importation process at the time simply because the whole thing is far more complicated than usual. So in this video, part two of three, we're going to be looking into this in a bit more detail. Instead of importing a single square resolution PNG image onto just one custom button in touch portal, which is what I've been showing you on occasion up until now, this time we're going to be importing a much larger rectangular image into touch portal that will be spread across 18 custom buttons made up of an array of nine buttons wide and two buttons high. For this to work properly, however, so that there's absolutely no image distortion, no image misalignment, and still have an image at the end that is fully functional as far as an iPad and a flight simulator is concerned, is a rather tricky concept. Having said that, I've developed a method to overcome the problems associated with this, and this is what we're going to look at now. It may not be the only method out there, as some of you may already have something that works equally well but for me personally this is how I've chosen to do it. Okay so let's get started. Um, open up a new session of PowerPoint with the standard uh, widescreen format template and then go up to layout and left mouse click that and then left mouse click the blank uh, icon here and you will end up with a blank template as required. Now unfortunately as you probably will know by now uh, you cannot import very successfully a rectangular image into Touch Portal. All images that go into Touch Portal if you want to see them properly have to be uh, in a square resolution. So what we need to do is to change um, the dimensions of this template from rectangular to a custom square size of 19 by 19 centimeters. Now, if you're not sure how to do that, please refer back to my uh, previous videos when I've gone over this process quite a few times. Having created your um, square template of 19 by 19 centimeters, centimeters, sorry, uh, give it a dark gray background. And then what you need to do is to duplicate uh, this uh, template 18 times because that's how many custom buttons in touch portal that we need to create images for. Uh, when you've done that uh, go down to slide sorter click on that and you will see all of your um, 18 templates ready to go. After that go down to uh, the normal layout icon down here and select uh, slide one. Now at this stage just save this file and minimize it down here to your uh, system tray. Um, do not close it because you're going to need it uh, shortly uh, for importing of the uh, STEC autopilot panel image. So now you need to go back to um, the PowerPoint file where you created um, the autopilot image uh, following the last video that I did on this subject. Um, and I'm assuming that you did do that. Um, <clears throat> if you didn't, I'm sorry, you're not going to be able to go any further forward with this. But if you did, then all well and good. Um, so open that file, um, get the image of the STEC autopilot panel up. Uh, on the screen and then what I want you to do is to uh, select up here and then select all and then all the component parts of this image that we that we made up in PowerPoint originally will all be grouped together or they will be in a minute um, when we right click uh, with your cursor mouse cursor anywhere on the image that brings up this menu so you select group and then select group again 
and now all of the component parts of this image will literally be joined together ready for the whole complete image to be copied and pasted into the, your new PowerPoint presentation with all of the square, re square resolution uh, dark grey templates are waiting. So place your cursor directly over the image anywhere, um, right mouse click and then select copy from the menu up here. So this image will now be uh, placed onto the Windows clipboard uh, ready for pasting into your next presentation. So at this stage you've finished with this uh, this particular file, we don't need it anymore. So save it, uh, but then close it. So now we uh, go back to the uh, presentation that you just created with all of your 18 dark grey templates, square templates I should add, and you literally uh, right mouse click anywhere on this screen and um, you click on paste and then the whole complete and grouped image of the STEC autopilot panel will be pasted here ready for you to do some more work on. Now at this stage we should just relax, take a quick breather and then consider what we're actually trying to achieve here. Yes of course we're trying to get this autopilot panel image into touch portal but what else? Well there are three things to consider in this whole importation process which are firstly that we need to ensure each of the 18 autopilot panel sub images have a totally square resolution so that they can actually be imported into touch portal in the first place. Secondly we need to avoid any image distortion or misalignments of the image when it's eventually placed into touch portal and across the 18 different custom buttons. Thirdly, we give the whole image in touch portal the right scale and size. And lastly, we ensure that the autopilot panel retains its functionality both on an iPad and in the flight simulator. Now after taking all of these requirements into account, I finally decided to use a grid array as my guide to divide the whole image into equal sized sections and this uh, part of the process would initially be done in PowerPoint. The grid array itself has a format of nine squares wide by two squares high and each square works out at four centimeters by four centimeters in PowerPoint of course, which given that the original autopilot image is eight centimeters high makes perfect sense for a two row grid. Now if you look at the image on the screen now, you'll see that the 9 by 2 grid, grid array sits nicely over the panel's image, covering it precisely in the vertical plane. It also covers the image in the horizontal plane, but leaves some overhang on the left and right sides. Not to worry about this though, it doesn't present any real problems with the importation process and can, can be uh, dealt with later in touch portal. The 9 by 2 size grid array also does something else which is very important and that is it allows each of the functional controls of the autopilot panel to have their own dedicated and completely separate custom buttons in touch portal which can then all be programmed individually for example the heading button the nav button and the altimeter button and so on and going further on this 9 by 2 grid array also allows me to divide the LCD display down into various sections each of which sit directly above the corresponding autopilot control buttons. So even parts of the display can be programmed in touch portal for text to appear or not as the case may be. And lastly on this you'll probably note the vertical speed control knob which is actually straddled across two custom buttons which is actually exactly what I wanted it to do as I need two custom buttons in touch portal to move the knob clockwise and counterclockwise in the virtual aircraft. Anyway, enough of that for the moment, let's move on and what do you immediately notice about the autopilot panel image on the screen in relation to the dark grey square templates that we made earlier? Yes, it's too small, right? And far too small to cover all of the 18 dark grey templates that we have available. Sadly then, uh, we have more work to do, or so it seems, as we need to increase the size of the image and the grid array 
uh, together by some margin and we need to do so in order that the that each of the 18 image subsections fit precisely over each of the 18 dark grey and square templates. So the first thing to do then is to select all parts of the grid array and the autopilot panel image itself and group them all together as one. Then right mouse click the resulting image and select format shape then size and properties icon before checking the lock aspect ratio tick box. Now we're ready to make the image larger and we can do so in the knowledge that the image won't become distorted whilst moving it about. However, having said that, there is one more small issue to overcome and that relates to the text on the image. If you look at the image now, you'll see that as I've started stretching it from the lower left corner, you'll note that the text itself doesn't actually increase in scale along with the main image. The text stubbornly stays at the font size it was originally set up with. Having said that though, this situation is only a minor one and can be recovered and I'll show you how to do that later in the video. But for the moment we'll continue to make the image as large as required and leave the text in place. So when it comes to making the image larger, it needs to be stretched enough by pulling at any of the four image corners so that each one of the red grid array squares precisely fits over each one of the dark grey square templates. Now to help with this I found that by clicking on the outer casing and the front fascia panel together and then reducing the transparency of both you can see more easily through the image to where each red square is in relation to its template as demonstrated for template number one on the screen. Now all you have to do is replicate this process another 17 times until all of the dark grey templates have had their required image placed on them. So to save time, here's the speeded up version. So now that part of the process has been completed, if you click on the slide sorter icon at the bottom of the screen, then you'll see all of our nice new 18 square templates with all of their respective images placed on them. And it's sort of like a, like a jigsaw puzzle that needs to be put together, only this time we'll be importing this jigsaw puzzle into Touch Portal. And obviously to do that, we need to make sure that all of the pieces get placed into Touch Portal in the right order. Now I'll be showing you how to do that very thing in just a second, but already just by looking at the screen you can see that the original image of the STEC autopilot panel is now starting to re-emerge. Anyhow, before all of that we now need to go back and tidy up a few things, starting with the text, the current font sizes of which are all wrong. So simply by working our way through the 18 different templates one at a time, we need to look for any text that will show itself on an individual custom button later on in Touch Portal and resize it accordingly. And in this respect, I've detailed the finishing font sizes for each one uh, and they will appear in the following uh, few slides. However, when resizing some of this text, uh, care has to be taken because once it's been resized said text may actually end up being spread across two different templates and thus two different custom buttons in touch portal for example the uh, resized STEC autopilot text that you can see here now in such cases you'll not only need to rescale this text on the template in focus i.e. the one we're looking at now top row second from the left but also on the template immediately to the right of it. Otherwise, when in Touch Portal later on, you won't actually see the whole piece of text as you're supposed to, with some of it simply missing from view. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. Anyway, to save time in the video, I'm now going to go through the details of just a couple of these templates, 
just to show you the different font sizes involved something that you will definitely need to know if you wanted to take this project on I'm sure though that once I've shown you these particular examples that you'll be able to deal with the rest of the text without any particular problems okay so starting with the um, template that we're already focused on here um, we need to change two uh, text sizes one is this Calibri text down here and we need to change that to font size 180 and this is Hero Aroni text I'm not sure how you pronounce that and we need to change that to uh, 72 now you can ignore all of these other texts here don't do anything with those um, because they're not they're not a part of the template that we're focused on um, the only thing we need to be concerned about at this stage is this part of the autopilot text now that part there the OT is not going to be seen on this particular template when it's imported into um, uh, touch portal but when you look at the one next to it when you see this template and and the custom button that that one is going to go on then that OT will appear so when you're looking at the whole thing you want to see all of that text and not just a part of it so we go to this template now to focus on that and here it is uh, so we firstly resize the nav text to 180 Calibri as before and just here look you can just make out the STEC autopilot text that is so small at the moment um, we need to make that as big as we did before so it's going to be our only uh, font size 72 and when we do that it's going to uh, straddle these two templates here now the only bit of that text that we're going to see in this particular template is that o OT the letters OT and only not even all of it you can just see a part of the O is still appearing in this template but anyway when you go into touch portal and look at this part of the image on in cust on the custom buttons that's what you will see within that uh, red grid there not that arrow of course but you'll see that there and you'll see that there then we go to um, <coughs> Uh, the, the uh, template below that one or below the heading one and we come to the heading button and that is uh, Calibri as well uh, font style and we're going to resize that to uh, 150 now again that is got in this image it's gone it's very small again we don't need to worry about any of that none of this text here you need to worry about you only need to think about what is in that template that we're focused on here as far as that heading and that nav is concerned they're subject to the other templates that we looked at before not this one then we go um, down to the end I'm showing you these because they're all different font styles and te uh, text sizes so I'm just giving you examples here so we go down to this end one um, uh, which is in touch portal it's non-functional unfortunately I haven't found a way of being able to <coughs> uh, increase or decrease that number as you turn this um, control knob here it will work in the aircraft but it's just not going to work in touch portal I don't think there's any way of doing it but anyway back to text um, this is a text f uh, type called OCR A for Alpha extended uh, I've never used it before never come across it until now uh, but the font size is very large at 350 here now as far as this template is concerned this is the one we're focused on there is no other text here to be concerned about all this other text here you can ignore as far as this template is concerned then we go on to uh, the uh, template below the below that one <coughs> excuse me and we've got this VS uh, times 100 so vertical speed times 100 and that has to be changed to uh, font size 72 to make it this big um, and you can see that the zero at the end of it is not going to appear on this template and on this custom button in touch portal it's going to appear on this one here so we need to make sure that this text is also changed in size in this template as well 
so we just change it up to 72 as we, as we did before and the zero is now going to appear in this template here and not this one here all you're going to see in this one is vs uh, times one zero and the zero the last zero is going on this template alone um, in all of these slides I've put this down here rescale text font sizes but only for the text found or likely to be found I should say in the uh, template that you're fo focused on ignore everything else so all of this again vs alt rev APR all of that stuff and up here even you can forget it because it's not going to be a part of this template here okay um, I know it really I realize it sounds very complicated but hopefully you get the gist of what I'm talking about uh, most of the time uh, you only have to look in uh, look at one single bit of text in one template uh, but it's only where these um, individual bits of text uh, get end up getting spread across two templates then you have to go through this little bit of a process okay so I think that's enough on uh, text for the moment okay so that's that part uh, but unfortunately we still haven't finished our tidy up process yet um, there's a couple of more things to do and the first of those is to remove this red grid array uh, that we put in as a guide to make sure that the image sat precisely over the templates that we created in the very beginning um, so the way to do that really is to right click anywhere on the image uh, select group and then ungroup and then uh, some of the parts of the image will start to become ungrouped then select um, each one of these red squares here around this image being careful not to accidentally select anything else and then simply delete and you should end up with your image looking like that um, and then you have to go through the rest of the 17 templates and do that again I know it sounds very laborious and it can be but the results are quite spectacular I think then we have to do one other thing finally and that is to uh, change the transparency of the image uh, that we um, increased to 50% earlier on so again we could see through the image to know exactly when we had uh, placed our image exactly over the uh, dark grey template so click on the outer bevel of the display and the front fascia together and then right click uh, select format shape and then go to transparency and slide this across to the left so that that goes from 50 down to 0 and then what you should end up with is this um, and there is your uh, autopilot all image all ready to be imported now don't worry about this text again um, because we're only focused on on this uh, slide in the presentation we're only focused on that particular template and there's no text in there anyway um, this will all sort itself out in in the fullness of time so go through that process again for the next 17 templates as I said and then we'll be ready to start importing this into touch portal so I'll see you there
Okay then, so there we are. The image of an STEC autopilot panel that started off life as a presentation in PowerPoint has now been successfully imported into Touch Portal with no image distortion, no image misalignment and with each of the autopilot controls given their own custom buttons ready for logic programming which by the way will be the subject of the third and final video of this series. Now you're probably thinking at this stage, uh, assuming that you actually got this far in the video before switching off, that the image importation process I've just shown you is very long-winded and complicated, and you'd be right, it is. In fact, actually putting this video together in order to show you the, the process in the first place was even more long-winded and complicated, but I'm really glad that I persevered. Now due to its complexity this image importation process won't be for everyone and I suspect that only the die-hard touch portal enthusiasts will even attempt it but hey the information is out there now and if anyone wants to have a go at it then please by all means feel free. Okay so that brings us to the end of the video. Um, I hope that you enjoyed it uh, but if you have any questions please let me know and I'll try and help where I can. Please also don't forget to smash the like button along with the subscribe button and bell so that you don't miss anything going forward. Okay, um, signing off then. Thanks again for watching and ta-ta for now.